the first thing you're going to do is go, go back and you're going to landmark the iliac crest. So come in from the waist again, push down onto the top of the iliac crest, find the top of the iliac crest. Now stay in the mid axillary line, walk your hands up through the soft tissue of the waist, and until you come onto a rib. Stay in the mid axillary line, Colleen, way out, way out, yeah, way out sideways. <laughs> Now, how do you know which rib that is? The tenth rib continues all the way around to the front. The eleventh doesn't. So follow that rib all the way around to the front, and if you reach a pointy end on it, you'll know that that is likely eleven. It may be twelve, but it's often eleven. If it continues right the way around to the front, then you're on ten. Okay, because some people have really, really long 11th ribs. So now, walk your fingers up now to find the one above it. So make sure that you're on the 10th rib, on left and right side. So find the 10th rib. That's the one that connects all the way around to the front, to the costocartilaginous bar. Find the 10th rib, left and right side. <laughs> Now I want you to explore the tissue just above the rib, feel what the intercostal space feels like compared to what the bone of the rib feels like so that your hands know whether you're on a bone or you're on an on a intercostal space. Then walk your fingers up onto the ninth rib. Now the ninth one is the one that we're actually going to do more landmarking on, okay? So find that ninth rib left and right side. To assure yourself that you're actually on the ninth rib on the left and right side, push one rib medially, so push the rib, and you should feel the response of that push on the opposite side of the chest. So just because they're lying down doesn't mean that they're lying straight. They could be lying in a side bending, and you may be off a level or so. So do your little ring wiggle, feel the neutral zone of motion, and ensure that you are actually on the ninth rib. Now what I want you to do is you're going to take the rib on the opposite side that you're standing on and in the mid axillary line mark it with an X. So get your pen and mark it with an X. Okay. Now trace the back of the rib, so follow the rib all the way back to the iliocostalis or to the border of the erector spinae. And what you'll feel, what you'll start to notice, depending on how much bulk there is in the back muscles, is that it gets more difficult to feel the back of the rib through the muscle mass of the erector spinae, okay? So see if you can, follow, follow it through until you get to the level of the spine, to the vertebra. If you can't feel it through the muscle mass, then just con continue a line along the same trajectory or along the same plane or the same line as the line of the rib. And put an X just lateral to where you think the transverse process is on that part of the ninth rib. So now you've got two X's on the ninth rib. Yes? So now you're going to put your thumb on the X closest to the spine. And you're going to put your middle finger on the X of the same rib in the mid axillary line. If you're not sure, just look up at the screen in terms of what I'm doing. Okay? So that you've actually got a nice hold of that entire rib. on the opposite side. Okay, now, patient on the table, take a nice breath in, big, big breath in, and breathe out. And you should feel that rib move. Now, it may not posteriorly rotate when they breathe in because they're laying on it, but you should feel some movement of that. All right? Now, you're going to do exact, keep that hand there, and you're going to do exactly the same thing on the side of the rib cage that's closest to you. So go find the 10th rib.
Feel the intercostal space in between 10 and 9. Find the body of the ninth rib. Leave your middle finger on the body of the ninth rib. So Colleen, you shouldn't be moving your right hand around. Just leave your right hand still. This is all now your left hand. Okay, Your right hand is, is totally on the ninth ring. Now, use your thumb or your index finger or some other part of your hand to follow the body of that ninth rib all the way back towards the spine until you have a nice caliper grip between your middle finger and your thumbs of that left ninth rib, the one you're, the side you're standing on. So now you've got the left and right, should have the left and ninth ribs in both of your hands. So now we're going to do is we're going to actually wiggle this thing. And it's not a straight, direct, lateral translation. So what I want you to do is to initiate the movement of this ring by posteriorly rotating the rib on the opposite side that you're standing on. So for me on this skeleton, it's the right rib. I'm going to posteriorly rotate it, and it's all wired up. It won't move. But I want you to posteriorly rotate that rib on the opposite side and feel the response of the rib on the other side. Make this ring dance. Anteriorly rotate one rib, posteriorly rotate the other. And there's nothing to see with this, so if you feel things better with your eyes closed, close your eyes and just feel if you can make this ring dance. Now, how do we get on to the sixth thoracic ring? How would you know that you're on the sixth thoracic ring? Well, you're on nine, count up three more. So if you're on nine in the mid-axillary line, feel the intercostal space between nine and eight. Come on to eight. Intercostal space between eight and seven. Come on to seven. Intercostal space. Come on to six. Now, what you may find as you get up into this area is there doesn't seem to be an intercostal space. There'd be a couple of ribs that are really close together. And if the ribs are really close together, it's likely that that segment is side flexed, right? Because that's what the ribs do in side flexion, so they come close together. And so sometimes it just feels like you don't have a space, you just have a big rib. So what, let's walk up a little bit further now from six, five, four. So now, if we want to try and find the back of the rib that's medial to the scapula, we can't walk, we can't walk our fingers along the back of the rib because the scapula's in the way. So how are we going to landmark and know that we're actually on the back of the rib, medial to the scapula? Palpate the rib in the axilla with your index finger. So come on to the fourth, and if you're not sure if it's four or five or three, I don't really care. I just, this is not about that. But So pick a rib that's somewhere within the um, region of the, of the scapula. And with your other hand now, just lay your hand along the back of the rib cage, just medial to the scapula. Move the fourth rib in the axilla and see if you can feel through your hand where the rib is moving between the medial border of the scapula and the spine. And then use your fingers to make it more specific. So wiggle the rib and feel for the response. See if you can feel, okay, this is the one that's moving. And that's how, if you are interested in finding, well, where is the fourth thoracic, where's the fourth thoracic ring, or which one is this, landmarking it, uh, if you want to know the number, you pick it up in the axilla, you go, okay, this is the one that's shifted or translated, this is the one I want, what one is it? You wiggle it, feel its response medial to the scapula, 
And then all you need to do is count the ribs from the, the, on the medial border of the scapula up to know which one you're on. So if there's one, two, three, four ribs above, then you know you're on the fifth thoracic ring. Make sense? So you work your way up in the mid-axillary line and you go, whoa, here's one that feels kind of bumpy and shifted. I wonder which one this is. You can either count up from below or you can wiggle the rib, feel its response medial to the scapula, pick it up medial to the scapula and count how many remain above. We cannot use the scapula as a landmarking. Not everybody's spine of the scapula is at the level of the third thoracic ring.